tell you. Of course you can. You can tell me anything. I thought all this was over with. Fresh start. But it was never going to be over, oh, was it? Oh, John, please, calm down. I'm sorry I've upset you. I was just fooling myself. Oh. It's Peter. Just ignore it. Hello? Uh, yeah, sorry, I was only, um... I just... Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be right there. Yeah, cheers. I've got to go. No, you can't. Not like this. You were going to tell me something. No, I wasn't. No. John, please, just sit down and let's uh, talk about... No, I can't deal with this right now. I just... I can't. I can't believe he's dropped us in it like that. Well, that's it. He's gone. Well, so basically there's no work for us after this. No. Oh, talk of the devil. How's he dare to show his face in here? Job murderer. Well. Hiya. Hello. You know what? I had a nice, peaceful life before I bumped into you. Not my fault. I know. It's not mine either. But you're right. We were brilliant together. And I don't see why either of us should lose out. What do you mean? If you can assure me that this is the end of it. It is. There'll be no more talk of it. From now on, we just concentrate on work. Absolutely. All right, we're back in business. You will not regret this, I promise you. Right, everybody, listen up. The order's back on. Really? Yep. I'm sorry, I know I've messed you about, but what happened the other day was a total misunderstanding. From now on, it's full steam ahead. Sorry about that oh, before. You had every right. Let me apologise by buying you all a drink. <laughs> Sean, same again, please. Include yourself in that. Well, that's a relief. I can enjoy my drink now. Well, here's something I hope will make you even happier. What's this? It's a fortnight in France for two near Paris. Oh, my God. Yeah, we fly next week. I know it's short notice, but it was a last-minute deal. Well, are you up for it? Well, yeah, I suppose. Now, of course I am. I'm just not sure Carla will be, that's all. I don't know how you stand it. Sorry? Being married to my son. Oh, are you Roy's mum? For my sins. Uh, I'm Eileen. I had forgotten how backward he is. Uh, well, he's not backwards. He, he, he's actually very intelligent. Well, he's backwards and coming forward, that's for sure. There is a dearth of conversation in that place. An absolute dearth. He just doesn't like wasting words. Does he know any? Hi. I'm Julie. I met you before in the cafe. Oh, yes, yes. The one with the dubious dress sense. And who are you? The one in the wheelchair. <laughs> I like her. <laughs> now, would you be so kind as to get me a dry sherry? Chase in. Uh, no, he's at the market. All right. Is it important? No, no, it doesn't matter. It'll do another time. Thanks, I'll be in touch. Forget any other. Just give me a fair interview. I'm entitled to that, surely. <laughs> okay, take a seat. Right then, Mrs. McIntyre. Call me Gail. Right then, Gail. Have you had any previous bar work experience? Not really, no. Right, well, there's no point continuing. Well, hang on a minute. It's a bar manager you want, not a bar maid. Right. Gail, have you had any previous managerial experience? Yes, lots. We managed a home, almost single-handedly. Managed two sons, better than they managed themselves. Without me, the washing wouldn't get done, the cooking would clean. Yeah, well, I hardly think you can equate the two. <laughs> Shows what you know. Oh, lad, this is a complete yeah, oh, waste oh, of time. Oh, okay, right. In my role as receptionist at the medical centre, I learnt good public relations, polite telephone manner, how to use a computer database, infiltrate patients' records. That's not fair. Neither is this. Look, you're asking me to forget you're my mum, but you wouldn't be here if I wasn't your son. I'd work really hard. Till two or three in the morning? If I had to. Oh, come on. You know you've fallen asleep in front of the telly by ten o'clock. Just too old for this. That 
can't say you just. I could report you for that. <laughs> yes, yes, you could, but it's the truth. Look, Panthers want to see someone young and sexy. No. You're right. <laughs> Get the message. <laughs> oh. I'll love you anyway. I thought I'd find you in here. I should have told you then. That kid's driving a wedge between us. It was never going to be easy, you know. If you thought that, you'd be mad. Well, I knew there'd be problems, just not this many. Yeah, and you'll get through it. You know, I bet Mum's feeling just as stressed as you are. She just puts a better front on it. You reckon? Yeah. Look, go home. Make up with her. I'm not sure how. Not the amount of rows that you've had down the years. You should know how by now. That is not what I call a dry sherry. Oh, and what would you call it then? A looby loo? No, it's what I call you. It's sweet and it's not a full measure. It's dry and that's because you've drunk some. The merest sip and I had to force it down. Maybe we should go away, Sylvia. Mm. Very well. Oh, I see. You've had no trouble downing the rest, have you? I have manners, unlike some. <sighs> Do you know, I sometimes wonder why I bother doing this job. Oh, it's from Todd. He's going to come and see me on Sunday. Oh, that's nice. He's bringing Jules, his new boyfriend. He wants me to meet him. Oh, well, that's a good thing, isn't it? Sounds serious. Do I hear wedding bell? Give over. It's a bit short notice, isn't it? But I'm sure we'll manage. It would be a shame to ruin such a romantic gesture. Really? Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> I take it you're going to be a good cop, then? They've worked hard. It doesn't harm to reward them, and then they'll work twice as hard next time. Hey, France, eh? Nice one. Just make sure you treat yourself to something nice while you're there. That money's for enjoying. She won't need to spend a thing not while she's with me. Careful, I might hold you to that. Good. I intend to spoil your rotten. You deserve it after what you've been through. Here you go, mate. 25. Happy Easter. Cheers. John, do you mind? Sorry. So, uh, you feeling okay? When sorrows come, they come not single spies, but in battalions. What? Nothing. I'm just dipping to the Sorry about Jeff. No, it's okay. He's right. You do deserve it after everything you've been through. Yeah, well, there's no need to rub your nose in it. So, will you be going up the Eiffel Tower again? No. It's the sort of thing you only do once, isn't it? Yeah, plus you was petrified. I was not. <laughs> yeah, so why were you hanging on to me on then? Well, maybe I was just being romantic. You'd have some good times, didn't you? Yeah, we did. We had lots of good times. But I'll see you when you get back. So what are your plans for Easter? Just hanging out with Gary. So it'll be long layings and early nights, mainly. Oh, look at you. What are you doing? Well, thinking about Todd coming up from London, I might go down to London and see Dylan. Oh. I could get him an Easter egg. Oh. Oh. Maybe I'll spend the weekend with me, sis. Oh. I haven't met Todd yet. Or his new boyfriend. Actually, I'm a bit nervous about that. Can we just see how it goes? Oh. Definitely, definitely next time. Yeah. Well, looks like I'll be on my own again. <laughs> I wonder what Frank's doing this weekend. I still can't believe he's back in the factory. I'd steer well clear if I were you. Why? Do you know something we don't know? It's just a feeling I get. Same again. Hmm? Yeah, of course I will. I'll well, see you next week then. Thanks, Hilary. Are you all right, love? I'm gonna still go to the park if you want. Don't feel like it now. Oh, no, well, I don't blame you. Look who I found. 
Listen, I don't know what I've done wrong, but whatever it is, I'm sorry. You don't know. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter now anyway. What's done's done. <coughs> Marry me. What the hell are you doing? I'm proposing. I tell you what, why don't we go and have that picnic in the garden, eh? Just the two of us. You reckon that was a no, or I don't know. What'd you do that for? It's always softened her up before. Ah, oh, get up, you look a right prat. Yeah. Mm. Hey, Sean. Can I, uh, have a word? Yeah, sure, I was just coming out. Oh, I think this is a bit better in private. You don't like me very much, do you? I wouldn't say that. I don't really know you. Exactly, you only know what other people have told you, like... Maria. It's not true, you know. I mean, do you really think I'd be hanging around here if it was? Suppose not. Although it is a shame that she's left. Yeah, I agree. And it would be a shame to lose you and all. How do you mean? I don't like being slandered. So, I was hoping that we could draw a line under all this. Yes, yeah, sure. Good. You know what? I'm really glad we've had this chat. Here's to a fresh start. It's nothing, honest. Just been one of them days, you know? Do you know what? Izzy says to do great frothy coffees in the bistro. Do they? Don't know, so we try them and see. Yeah, why not? <laughs> uh, it's, it's a knife. Came with the forks. And some of them are the wrong way up. Oh, for heaven's sake, what does it matter? They have to be the right way up. Why will the heavens fall? Um, Sylvia, why don't you sit down and I'll bring you a nice cup of tea. Mad as a march, eh? <laughs> or an Easter bunny. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think she might be a bit tipsy. I suppose she must be missing her husband. Nah, she always did like a drink. She had these lavish dinner parties every weekend. Of course, I'd be banished to my bedroom. She used to find me an embarrassment. I'm sure she didn't. Oh, yes. Yes. It's all right, though. I found her an embarrassment, too. Now, to be honest, Gail, it wouldn't have suited you running a bar. Why? Because I'm a middle-aged woman? No, because of the hours. Well, I'd have put up with it for the sake of a little self-esteem. No, even my own son would employ me. Oh, I know all about unaccommodating sons. Roy has been blatantly hostile to me ever since I arrived. No, no Sylvia, you know that's not true. Are you Roy's mother? For my sins. Well, he just has trouble expressing his feelings. Yeah, well, it's just as well, isn't it? Otherwise, I'd be out on my ear. There's nothing wrong with Hope, is there? No, no, she's doing great. Was it John, then? Yeah, sort of. Is he OK? No, not really. And I think I've just made things worse. Oh, why? What have you done? Nothing, nothing in particular. I just haven't been very supportive, that's all. I think you've been well supportive. He's so lucky to be married to you. Most women, they wouldn't have coped. That's what marriage is about, isn't it? Coping. The rough with the smooth. Hey, and for what it's worth, I think Chesney's lucky to have you and all. Thanks. <laughs> Ain't that having your coffee? It's a bit sweet. Oh, well, if you will have vanilla in it. <laughs> <sighs> She's gorgeous, isn't she? Yeah. You don't give him birth? Does it hurt? Yeah. <laughs> but it's worth it. I've, uh, I've just been thinking, John, maybe, maybe you need to call it a day, you know? Go home and you need to take this in small steps. I'm fine. How many times? Hey. Hey. I'm trying to do you a favour. Yeah. I know, I know. I'm really grateful. Sorry. Can I have a word? <laughs> it's 
Sorry about that. He's, uh, he's got a gippy tummy. So, can I uh, help you? So, is this as exciting as it gets, then? Taking tea with the neighbours? Well, uh, would you just, just excuse me just a minute? <laughs> Hayley, I wonder if I could have a word uh, in private. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong, is there? No, no, no. I'm just after a bit of advice, that's all. The thing is, you see, I've got this friend who's got a male friend who, who likes to dress up, you know? Dress up. Yeah, yeah. In women's clothing. And the thing is, my friend doesn't really know how to deal with this sort of problem, but so I wondered if you could shed any light on the matter so maybe she could find it easier to understand. And you're asking me because... because I've got a problem as well. Oh, no, no, I didn't... For your information, transsexuals and transvestites are two completely different things. A transvestite is a man, whereas I... Oh, Hayley, 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 Hayley. I'm visiting all the local businesses in the area to warn them. Trouble is, counterfeit notes are getting so sophisticated, they're not always easy to spot them. All right, well, if I have any doubts, I'll, I'll get in touch you. All right, thanks a lot. See you later. Cheers. John? John! Let me in, please. Look, you can't stay in there all day, can you? Go away. John. Don't let them take me. Please. I'll make everything right, I promise. The police, they've gone. Everything's fine. Now, please, John, just move the chair. No. You're just saying that. I'm sorry, fellas. I'm, uh, I'm just going to have to close shop for a bit. I'm, I'm really sorry. Don't you dare sulk. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be happy that you turned me down again. Can't you see how inappropriate that was and how selfish? Selfish? They's just found out from you blurting it out that her mum's died and you choose that time to make another one of your stupid proposals. Oh, stupid, is it? Well, you know what I mean. I'll tell you what's stupid. Taking on another kid at our age when we should be enjoying ourselves. Now Gary's gone, we should be having a bit of fun, you and me, not going through parenthood a second time round. No, you wanted this as much as I did. I wanted to make you happy. That's all. Oh, uh, no, no, you're not turning this back on me. You'd have been fine if it was some little girl that wanted to bake cakes with you, but the moment you realise that she's got problems, you don't want to know. Yeah, no, you're right. I don't feel capable of dealing with a kid that lies and steals and makes up little stories. And what's more, I don't want to. What do you mean by that? There's still time for us to change our minds. I can't believe you just said that. Look, there's a whole new life waiting for us in Germany. A good life that you and me deserve. Why should we let her hold us back? Uh -uh. There is no way we are deserting that little kitty now. <sighs> Speak for yourself. I can't take any more of this. It's either her or me. You choose. Thanks for that. <laughs> Making me go for a coffee. Made me feel a lot better. Fizz! I'm looking everywhere for you. There's something wrong with John. Well, what's happened? I don't know. He's, uh, he's in a bad way. Listen, you'd, you'd better come. Can you wait the whole car? He's not hurt, is he? No, no, no. He's just been acting a bit strange. And then this copper turned up and he's freaked out and he's barricaded himself in the office. I can't get him out. Oh, my God. Can you go and fetch Dr Carter? Oh, I'll try, yes. Just I... tell him it's John! Fizz has gone to find you. Do you want me to go and fetch her? No.
He's not there. He's gone. Fizz. He's in the house. How did he seem? Really odd. He didn't want me to fetch Fizz's. He's chucking stuff about like he's looking for something. You should never let him go off his medication. I didn't. Oh, my God. No wonder he's been acting so strange. Uh, uh, wait. Look, we need to go in calmly. I think you two should stay here. No way. I'm going in. Besides, my John had never hurt anyone. John? He's not here. I'll check upstairs. John? John? No sign. He's gone. The back gate was open. Hey. Come on. I think we need to call the police. No. He probably just needs some space. Uh, Peter's right. We can't risk it. You said it was a policeman that freaked him out, though. So the last thing he needs is a whole load of them looking for him. No. He just needs some time to calm down, that's all. I'm sure he'll be back. So what now for John? Answers are coming, and sooner than you think. Coronation Street returns Easter Sunday. It's at 7.30. Next on ITV1, on Paul O'Grady Live, that's me. I'll be joined by Amir Khan, Anthony Cotton, Brenda Blethen and Tracy Bennett. See you then. Thank you. Uh...